In this episode of Strength Coach Tutorials, I'm going to show you how to create this KPI display dashboard where you can select an athlete down the left hand side here from the list box and it's going to automatically update the display. Some of the features of the display are we have donut charts here to display fitness testing information as well as a horizontal line chart which is going to allow us to make comparisons between different metrics really easily. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back and we are starting with a blank sheet, but I am starting with the data set that we finished off with in Strength Coach Tutorials number 60. And if you haven't seen that video, um, I will post a link to it right now. So just as a reminder of where we were in that video, what we had done is we had this data set of bench press, squat, deadlifts, vert, broad jump, and sprints. And then we converted those to both Z scores and T scores. And what we're gonna be using today is the T score. And all that is, is converting each score to a value out of 100 based on the score of the entire team with the um, mean value always being 50. So it's just a way to convert scores and then it will work really nicely for those donut graphs that we're going to create. So we'll go back to our blank sheet here. And what I'm going to do is whenever I'm going to start to make a dashboard video, what I like to do is divide all of the cells up into squares. So I'll show you what that looks like and I'll explain to you in a second why. So I'm just gonna take a whole big selection of these cells and I know that the rows are about 20 pixels wide. If I shrink these down to about 20 pixels or so, what you're gonna notice is it actually gives me squares to work with and I'm gonna do a bunch more as well. Um, and the reason that I like to do it that way is basically because it gives me equal portions where I can start to put in my graphs and charts. So if I wanted say this area here to be a chart, I could just sort of outline that and then I know exactly where that chart's gonna go. So it's just, it's just a way to make things even or if I needed a rectangle, I could just take a bunch of squares and then merge them. And it makes it a little bit easier when you are starting to work with dashboards if you just sort of do that first, okay? So, as a reminder from the intro, what we need to do is create our list box and um, we need to be able to pull our athletes into this sheet. So what we're gonna need first is I'm gonna need a spot on this sheet where I can pull my athlete name into. So I'm just gonna merge a bunch of cells here and color that yellow so that I know where that's gonna go. And then I'm gonna add a list box into here. So I'll go to the developer tab. And if you don't remember how to get to there, you go to file options and you can turn on the developer tab. So what I'm gonna insert is under form controls, there's an option to insert a list box. And I'm gonna insert one of those. And as I drag this out, what it's gonna look like is a big scrollable list. And the way that we populate this is we actually can go to format control. I've just right clicked here and I can select my input range and my cell link. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is select my input range. So what I wanna do is be able to populate that with all of my athlete names. So just over here to the side, I'm just gonna put the um, heading athlete names and I'm gonna use the unique formula to pull all of these athlete names out. If you don't have the unique formula, there's a few other ways you could do that. But, if you, but I do recommend upgrading to Excel 365 if you can. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna type equals unique, open that up, and my table is called table data. So TBL underscore data. And then I'm just gonna select the athlete names column. And all I've done is you just put that inside square brackets and I don't need any other arguments and it's gonna pull out all of my athlete names automatically. Now I want to take this and create a named list out of it. So to do that, I can go control alt F3 and it's gonna open up my names and I'm just gonna call this athlete names. And if you remember from other videos, because we are dealing with a spilled array, we want to reference BA3, but then we need to add a hashtag there to reference all of the cells. So I'll hit okay there. And I can check to see if that's working because in any cell, if I type athlete names and hit enter, it's going to enter all of those cells. And so that's how that works. So now I'm gonna add that to my form control. So I'm gonna go right click here, format control, and go athlete names as my input range. And then my cell link is where it's gonna output the number. I'm just gonna put that right beside where the athlete names is so it's easy to reference. And you'll notice that now it's populated 
that form control and I can actually click through here. And the way that these work is if I was to shrink this down, it gives me a scrollable menu and I can scroll through this. So these are really useful in dashboard type settings if you just wanna be able to click through multiple athletes all at the same time. And what this gives me is it gives me the row number that this athlete is actually in, in my list. So if you notice over here, I'll merge that and make it red so we can see it and maybe bold it. Every time I select a new athlete, you can see that the number over here is changing. And what that means is it's selecting the actual row number that that athlete is in. It's easy to see now because I just named my athletes one, two, three, all the way up to 30. So what I need to do is create a little formula that is going to pull that value into where I want my athlete names selected. So what I'm gonna use is equals index, open that up, and the array that I wanna index from is my table data, open that up, and I'm gonna select the athlete names column again, and the row number that I want to reference is, I already know what my row number is because I've already selected it over here, and then the column number isn't going to matter because we're just indexing that same column, and then as I hit enter here, what you're gonna notice is as I select a new athlete, it's going to give me that value, okay? So that's how we do that part. So now we have our list box that works and we're able to select our athlete and it will automatically enter on our actual dashboard. Now the next thing we have to do is actually pull out some of our data. So I'm just gonna take these three cells here and I'm gonna copy those, control C, and that's the data from our table. And I'm just gonna paste these over here. And when I paste them, I'm gonna right click and actually transpose them. Actually, I'm gonna move them down one. So I'll transpose them. So what I've done is when you transpose, it just takes things that are horizontal and makes them vertical, and vertical and makes it horizontal and vice versa, okay? Now, I know that I'm gonna be using those donut charts for these values. So what I'm gonna need is actually to pull out the value and the 100 minus value. And, what, and I'll show you why that's important in a second, but let's pull these out. So we're gonna use an index match here. There's a lot of ways we could do this. We could use a, a V lookup. We could use, um, I don't know, we could use an X lookup. We could use a filter function. But for those of us who don't have Office 365, using the index match is a really powerful tool as well. So to do that, what I'm gonna type is equals index. And what index does is it's gonna return a value out of a table or a specified range if I give it the row and the column that I want. So I'm gonna open that up and the array that I want it to actually look through is tbl underscore data. And then the row number that I want, well, we already know our row number, okay? So we know that it is athlete 10, so it should be 10. So I could just select that cell what I'm gonna do is show you how to use the match. So I'm gonna use the word match, and what match is gonna do is it will search for the athlete 10 in a specified range and then return the row number that that sits in. So I'm gonna go equals the lookup value that I want is my athlete 10 over here. And then where I wanna look for it is tbl underscore data athlete names. And then it's gonna ask me what kind of match that I actually want. And I want zero for an exact match and I'll close that off. And then I'm gonna do that one more time for the column match. This time the lookup value that I want is the test name. And where I wanna search for that is tbl underscore data. And I wanna look in the headers. And I'm gonna close that off. So to select the headers, what you do is just type hashtag capital headers, and then I also want an exact match there. And I'll close that off, and then close the whole thing off and hit enter. And what you'll notice is, as I select a new value, it's going to pull that out. So let's look at this formula one more time. We have index, what do we want to index? We want to index table data, and then we want to match the athlete name and find the row number, and then we want to match the headers and find the column number. And I'll hit enter. And I know that I'm gonna drag this formula, so I'm just gonna lock in this athlete name because that is never going to change spots. Okay, so I'm just gonna put dollar signs around that and hit enter. And I should be able to drag that down and it should enter. And I'll just check to see if that is working correctly. And in fact, it is. Okay, perfect. 
And then the last piece that I need is my 100 minus value. So all I'm gonna do is 100 minus this value here, hit enter, and then I'll just drag that down a couple of times. So that is all the data that we're gonna need to pull out in order to do these graphs. So let's do the first one here. I'll just bold those so I know where they are. What we're gonna do is I'm just going to select these two cells and I'm gonna to go to insert and recommended charts. And I'm gonna actually select down to pie chart and insert a donut chart and hit okay. So you can see it looks not bad, but it's not exactly the way we want it to look. So if I double click on here, it should open this whole up, this whole thing up. And my donut hole size, I'm gonna actually make 50. And I just think that's a good ratio to make the chart look um, really nice. And then from here, it's all about the coloring. So I don't really need the legend, I can delete that. I don't need the chart title, I can delete that. And now let's just do the coloring. So as I select the two pieces of the pie, what it's showing me is the value that we've pulled out as well as the 100 minus value to make a complete circle. And that's why this is important because we want it to make a complete circle. So on my value that it's pulled out, which is the blue right now, I'm gonna give that a pattern fill. And I, I like this one here, and I'm just gonna give it um, a black background. And then on my 100 minus value, I'm gonna give it no fill, whoops. On my 100 minus value, I'll make sure that I've just selected that side. I'm gonna give it no fill. And you can see what it's done is it just shows me half of the actual donut. And then the last piece that I need to make this look nice is if I just select the background and hit no fill, what you'll notice is it's gonna make it transparent. And then I can shrink this down a little bit. So I'm going to select this chart, go over to um, format, and I'm gonna hit align, and I'm gonna go snap to grid, snap to shape, and I can shrink this down a little bit and stick it in a bunch of cells. And if you'll notice when I do that, what it does, I can actually scroll behind it. So I'm going to take these cells that are behind it and highlight those and I'm going to merge those. And then I'll move this back out of the way. And inside of these cells is where I'm going to display the number for the values. So I'm gonna hit equals and it's going to equal the cell that we already pull out. I'll hit enter, put that in the middle, make it Arial black. Maybe I'll give it, I don't know, a red color so that it matches. I'll take some of the decimals away and make it a, a lot bigger. And then I can put this chart back in front of it. And you can see how that works now. It actually sits sort of right, or those numbers sit right in the middle of this chart. And as I switch around, what you're gonna see is the number in the middle is going to actually change. And it gives me that illusion of like a score, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a couple more of these in the same way that we just did. I'll copy this, paste it over a couple cells, and I'll get it to reference this one here, hit okay. And I'm gonna copy this chart, control C, and I'll paste that, and I'm gonna change the data on it. So select. I'll right click, select data, and edit the series. And instead of this one, I want the next one down, hit okay. And you can see what it does is it actually changes our colors back. So I'll do the exact same thing that I just did. No fill on the one, and we'll give the other one a gradient fill, sorry, a pattern fill. And we'll use this one here, and maybe we'll give it a blue color with a black background. I think that looks pretty good. And then we'll put it back over this one here. And then we gotta do this one more time, but I'm just gonna need a few more cells. So I'll create some more 20 cells. And then we'll do this one more time. So I'll copy this. Copy this um, chart. Paste it. And we'll change the data one more time. So right click, select data, edit all the way down and we'll select the new one, hit okay. Colors one more time, no fill, and then this one will give maybe a green color. Yeah, I like this green color, we'll give it a black background. And I think that looks pretty good there. 
And this one will make sure that we change to the next value. So we can hit OK. And then we'll paste that in there. Okay. So what you can see now is we have these charts. And as we select new athletes, they automatically update. So the last piece that we want to do is add that horizontal bar chart at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is take these values here. I'll go to insert recommended charts and there's a horizontal bar chart right there. Actually, I don't need all of them. I just need these ones here. Recommended charts, horizontal bar chart. I'll hit OK and I'm going to stick this right to the bottom here. So it sits right underneath these ones here. And then I just have to edit this a little bit. So I know that this is always going to be a value out of 100. So if I click on the axis here down at the bottom, I can give that a maximum value of 100. So you can see that that's going to change the scale quite a lot. I don't really need these series. Okay, but I'm going to correspond these actual series to the colors of our um, chart that we already have. So I'll just do that quickly so that it looks all right. So now those chart, those are going to correspond. I don't need this title, so I can delete that. I can delete this at the bottom here and then delete the actual axis. And then I can take these and it gives me the option to change these a little bit. If I take the gap width away a little bit, what you can notice is it's going to make these a little bit sort of bigger. Let's go down to about 50% or so. And I think that looks pretty good. And then if I wanted to, I could take these lines and I just click there and I could make those maybe black and then maybe make them a little bit thicker if I wanted that to look that way. And then the last piece to make this look more like a dashboard, we could hide all of these values here, but I'm not going to do that for the purposes of this video. What I can do though is if I go to view and then there's an option to take away the heading and the grid lines and that basically makes everything now look like it is um, just floating on a, a white background. So this makes everything look a little bit more like a dashboard. I'll just do one more thing. If I click on all of the charts um, under the border option, we can take away the actual like the actual border for the chart. So I'm just going to do that quickly so that all these charts aren't don't look like they're uh, all in their own world here. So there we have it. So now what do we have here? We have a basically a functioning dashboard where we can select any of the athletes out of our team and have their scores automatically update. How we could change this around, we could add extra numbers, we could add data labels or any number of things. But this is just a quick way that you could create a dashboard for your fitness testing results or to show your athletes or your coaches sort of how your athletes are doing. So I hope this trick helps you out. If you have any ideas for future tricks, please share them in the comments below. And if you found any value in this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.